Well, good morning and welcome to today's episode of Transformed. Uh, I want to continue our little series on standing firm. Um, today we're going to talk about standing firm in peace. Welcome to today's message with Pastor Jim Balzano. Before I continue, I want to thank Park Home for our studio furniture and Made by Vogel for many other items you see in our studio. Paul said this, I'm going to read this scripture every time. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything to stand. Stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. You know, there's one thing that this world seems to be lacking, and that's peace. And the fact of the matter is, peace has been stolen from even many believers. And yet, the Bible tells us that we can and we should be able to live in peace. Now, let me start with this. First of all, we have to understand something. There is a path to peace. And that path is Jesus. Plain and simple. The fact of the matter is, this, Paul said that the, they didn't know the path of peace. Because they didn't know the path of peace because the path of peace only comes in one person. And his name is Jesus. You see, Jesus was our pathway to peace. Now, let's think about this. The Bible says that you and I, that at one time, we were separated from God. At one time, there was enmity, if you will, between us and God. The fact of the matter is, it was Jesus, his blood, his sacrifice on the cross that enabled you and I to have peace with God. You know, you go back to creation. Adam lived in peace with God until Adam chose to sin against God. And the moment that he sinned against God, unrest or a lack of peace was the result. You see, this unrest with God is that a result of imperfect men being unable to keep the good and perfect moral law of God. You and I can't do it. And yet the Bible says that Jesus made peace on our behalf because he was the one who defeated sin by keeping the perfect moral law of God. Now, because of that, Christ made peace with God for us because he was the fulfillment of the ceremonial law. So now, here's the deal. You and I have the ability to live in peace with God. Now, why is that important? Because many of us want to live in peace in the world, and we want peace from God. But the fact is, I can't have peace from God until I'm in peace with God. Before we can have the peace of God, we must be in peace with him. Jesus said this. Jesus says, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives it to you. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let it be fearful. In another place, he said this. So Jesus said to his disciples, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he uh, said that, he breathed on them, received the Holy Spirit. You see, the fact of the matter is, some of us want God to give us peace, but we're not at peace with him. But when Jesus made peace with God, now I have the ability to have peace from God. And the reason is because he then puts his spirit inside of me. The Bible says what? That, that the spirit of God dwells within us. I stand firm in these days where there's a lack of peace in the world because the presence of Jesus is the peace of Jesus. Where he is, there's peace. Um, you know, fruit of the Spirit. Listen, listen to the fruit of the Spirit. That love, joy, peace. Love, joy, peace. Peace is a portion for believers because peace comes from the Spirit of God. I stand firm today because the peace of Jesus is fruit of the Holy Spirit within us. You see, many people, they have their, uh, their flesh is set and their minds are set on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit have our minds set on the things of the Spirit. For the mind set on flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace. You see, there is a peace that comes from God because I'm in peace with God. And then he puts his Spirit in me and the Spirit of Jesus is the Spirit of peace. Now, think about this for just a moment. What does this peace do? The Bible says that the peace of God 
surpasses all comprehension and it guards my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. Unrest, worry, fear, the things that are going on in this world, they're trying to steal a piece. It doesn't mean we like the things that are happening. It doesn't mean we like all the stuff we see happening in the world. But what it does mean is I can have peace even in the midst of it. That I can stand firm in peace. As a matter of fact, peace is also a byproduct of prayer. Because Paul said, to by everything, by prayer and supplication, your request be made known. And the peace of God will guard your heart and mind. And so I stand firm because peace becomes a product of prayer. I stand firm because I set my mind on the spirit of God, not on my flesh. I stand firm because peace is the culture of God's kingdom of which I am a part of and which is also inside of me. You see, so now when I look at this, how do I stand firm in this world? How do I stand firm whenever it seems that nations are raging and uh, uh, there's all this stuff going on and there's a pandemic and there's everything else that's happening? I stand firm because I have peace. I have peace with God. I have peace from God. I have the peace of Jesus with inside of me by his spirit. The Bible says that when I pray, his peace comes and passes all understanding. So now what happens, here's what happens as a byproduct of that. I stand firm because now I have peace with men. Peace with God and from God should produce peace with men. The fact of the matter is there's lots of people in this world I disagree with. The fact is there's a lots of political stuff I disagree with. That's a fact. But you know what? It doesn't mean I can't be at peace with people. I can even be at peace with people on whom I disagree. I can live in peace with men even when men don't want to live in peace with me. You know, David lived in peace towards Saul, even though Saul didn't live in peace towards him. Paul said to the Colossians, he said, let the peace of Christ roll in your hearts, to which indeed you were called to one body and be thankful. Let the peace of God roll in your hearts. Sometimes we're not letting that peace roll our hearts. We're letting fear roll it. We're letting uncertainty roll it. We're letting politics roll it. He said, let the peace of God roll your heart. You see, peace is a pursuit of men who have peace from God. When I have peace from God, I should be pursuing peace with other people. Peace with God is a gift of God to me. Peace of God is a gift of God to me. Peace with men is me sharing God's gift with others. That I can share the peace of God that he's given with me with somebody else. Peace with men is me sharing with others what God has shared with me. The good news of the kingdom of God produces peace with God. Peace from God and peace with men. That's why it's called the gospel of peace, the good news of peace. You stand firm in peace because you stand in the culture of the kingdom, not the culture of this world. Peace in this world is not a product of this world. It is a product of the world above. Listen to me. You can stand firm in peace. The world can rage and there can be unrest all around you, but you have peace with God. You have peace from God. You have the peace of God living inside of you and you can be at peace with men and you can stand firm. Don't let the things of this world rob your peace. God bless you. Have a great week.